smoke. Man, it's your boy, artist. Air the gap too deep. Are you Milan? Here, girl, Flamey G. But it's Auntie Pig. Ebony, aka Ebony, with an I. I'm from the Big Head Radio Show, and I'm with the King Teeth Network, huh? What's good? It's King Teeth from the King Teeth Network, and I've been, I've been telling y'all, I've been telling y'all that a collaboration is coming. I got my guy Johnny right, man. I got Johnny Filmworks himself right here, so you know I'm not lying. Um, it's HWIC and the King Teeth Network. We're coming together. I really want to bring more exposure to what they're doing. I mean, they're dropping movie after movie like i drop interview and we just want to be a part of that in any way we can so we just um are truly grateful for this opportunity um, the 32nd trailer of the movies he's put out into my full-length interviews and he thought it was a good idea eight different movies will be up on tubi um in 2024 by 2024 so you'll be seeing eight different trailers they'll be transitioning in and we'll be doing different bloopers and different fun things in there, building this relationship with the different actors and actresses. Shout out to everyone that's been working hard. The crew, shout out to all of y'all, HWIC, the family. Happy that we were able to bring this together and start this journey with us and keep this journey going uh, for years to come. What's up? And it's King Network. We are back uh, live and direct. Uh, shout out to my guy. Gordon as Gordon. Shout out to my guy Larry. We are at Black Box Studios. Man, if y'all don't know, get hip. A lot is coming. But we have an amazing special guest. And she got me hungry already. <laughs> she cooked so good. Uh, podcast Bay, Chef Bay. How are you? Yeah, it's so crazy you brought up um, Podcast Bay. Because that's, you know, that's, what I know that's my know. former. Yeah, but I, I kept Bay because it's like marketing. Chef, Chef Bay. Bay. Oh yeah, that's what you're gonna go as. Yeah. On everything. <laughs> Chef Bay for sure. Um, so Chef Bay, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> uh, you've been steady at it. Uh, what is your favorite part about cooking? Um, I like creating vibes through my food, like cooking. It just is so important. Like it, it started back with like my mom, and my grandma. So it's like they always created vibes like mm. instead like we elevate plates and um, yeah, okay. yeah, because my grandma, she's from Alabama and uh, she made everything from scratch. So when she taught my mom, she was very strict on her and made her cook everything like from scratch. So I picked it up, but I just love how they are. They were international with cooking. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, crazy story. But to sum it up, my grandma ended up getting married in Morocco. And um, she picked up a lot of dishes, like international dishes, making couscous. Um, hey. Yeah, the Moroccan couscous, a chicken tangine. So it's like this little sombrero looking thing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's how she she just always did everything on a on a different type of level. Mm. Yeah. I love it. So um, so I don't get distracted. I want you to tuck this for me. Oh, sure, ahead, sure, tuck sure. It under, boom. Now you can finesse. You know, look. Boom, yeah. Uh, Only the good. real professionals now you get it. Yo, yo. I don't want to get this. Come <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but we get animated because we're passionate about what we do. Yeah. Um. So it started young then. Yeah. It started very young. And what's crazy is I called you podcast, baby. But you were cooking back then. Yeah, yeah, so I got this pilot of me cooking back in 2017, Crazy. and I told my dad, I'm like, Dad, because my dad does videography and all this stuff, so he, I was like, Dad, can you, um, can you, can you get this video of me frying chicken? He was like, frying chicken? You don't even know how to fry no, ch no damn chicken. I'm like, I'm going to learn, and I was actually learning during the tutorial. <laughs> I'm trying to teach people, but I'm like, I, could, I feel like I could watch one video, and then I could just learn how to master something, but... Mm. I, I just always push myself to learn how to cook. It got weird one time because I was like a, a freshman in college mm -hmm. and I just needed to know how to perfect mac and cheese. Like I was destined to be like that mac and cheese person really? at the family events. So I tried and it was like trial and error. So it's not like something that was just like, oh, you can cook. It's just something you can do. No, you got to, it's a skill and you have to learn it. And, um, 
you're constantly learning yeah. to improve. It's nothing that you can just, I feel like, master. Mm. So it keeps me on my toes. Okay. So it was something that, for you, was a challenge. Yep, it's a challenge because, you know, it's a lot of math. The more into, like, and it's crazy, it's like, um, I guess it's regionally different, uh-huh. like, in the black diaspora. We season until the ancestors tell us to stop. But it. then you do get into measurements when it comes to, like, baking, and that's mm. when it get real math and scientific. Um, speaking of the science of cooking, I also have a business called High Fay Blends where we cook gourmet mushrooms. That we grow in a lab. Really? Yeah. So, talk about that a little bit. When, um, when that, I, seen that. I came in contact with uh, one of my friends who's like a mad scientist, a literal scientist. <laughs> like, um, his house is literally like the electricity is about to go out, maybe, because he got so <laughs> many so machines many <laughs> and so much stuff going through. And so, um, he needs distributors and um, he's pretty low key mm-hmm. with all the, all the stuff he got going on. So, I ended up picking it up and um he grows the gourmet mushrooms low like uh king's trumpet those ones all types of ones so if you're vegan you can just eat all the different uh, mushroom strains and then there it gets like uh, medical the medicinal ones <coughs> other ones but yeah we got them all that's dope yeah so kind of break down the business aspect of chef bay yeah, so it's so much layers. Yeah, it is. Okay, so the, I got to get one thing off if I don't. Because okay. how long is this episode? 30, 30 minutes. minutes. All right, 30 minutes. All right, so right now I'm doing a rollout for a web series mm-hmm. where I um, have interviews. I get to mix what I used to love to do, podcasting, mm. with cooking. Fire! And, you know, it's also marketing, which is what I majored in. So I can move it all together. So... That's supposed to drop early December. And, um, What's it called? Um, the web series is just an extension of Fab Cuisine gotcha. and Chef Bay. So gotcha. still trying to get the name together, but I'm in the background spinning my wheels, trying to get, you know, the, the, uh, the photo shoots, the, the whole rollout together. And then, um, but back to the actual business of uh, Fab Cuisine, I do catering events. Uh, family members like to book me. That's where it starts. I like to do the theatrics where it's like the smoke is coming off the glasses. Yeah, okay. And I soon want to do like flambe things where the flames is coming out the skillet. I just like to give like a show when experience. I could. Yeah, a whole experience. How important is the experience with the cooking? Um, It makes it memorable. Okay. Because I know sometimes people can be like, I remember the last time I ate something like this. It was when we... It was at such and such birthday. It was, you know, like, I just like to create experiences because food is, people love food. Mm. Like, it's really, it's something. And I like to make it pretty. Mm. That's my, I've been putting a little hibiscus, uh, what's some flowers? The orchid flowers and drinks. And I like to make um, drinks, too, creatively. Okay. I, I'm not so good at it, but my, uh... <laughs> I guess you can call her my friend or mentor, Amber Underwood. Got to shout her out. Yeah. She threw me so many, um, some so many uh, opportunities professionally, um, and she has a business called Slam Stand, okay. and she makes these pretty freaking drinks. She does the history behind drinks. That's fire. Yeah, because I, I I didn't even know so much black history in drinks, but yeah, the reason why I brought her up is because. Not only food you can elevate, you can make drinks super pretty yeah. with the smoke coming off and, and the flowers. Yes. Terrible drinks that we mixed. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. You gotta know the ratio. <laughs> Absolutely. So for you, um, what you said mac and cheese, but what other specialties would you say are you kinda perfected? So there is just certain things that people really like. Like, um, my boyfriend, he the one who gave me like the, the go ahead to start cooking for other people. Cause he like my shrimp and grits. <laughs> and he, it was like a lot of stuff that I was taste testing or whatever, or I was just fucking around in the kitchen. He would actually be like, bruh, this is so good. I remember um, he called burrito, burrito tacos, um, the tacos you dip motor oil, you dip in motor oil because of the little, yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the casame sauce. And I'm like, okay. So I need to 
make the motor oil tacos. I need to do this, this. So, yeah, he definitely gave me to go ahead and cook. Because I, I was single before, <laughs> once upon a time. And I used to just cook for myself. And I'd be like, I don't know if this food is really good or anybody uh, likes it for real. So the confidence came. Yeah, when I met him. Shout mm-hmm. out to that. Shout out to yep. that. Um, that's building, then. I love it because uh, so many times you hear the opposite, you know? Yeah. You get into something and it takes you away from the purpose. Absolutely. Um, but to be in it even more with somebody, that means it was supposed to happen. Yeah. So congratulations on the relationship. How has it been balancing, though? Um. So I feel like we do our businesses in seasons. Like, mm. this was recently... His season, Blast Apparel. Okay. <laughs> the bike. Okay. The bike. Okay, but anyways, um, yeah, so this past summer was his season where we just was like um, promoting his clothing brand. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, it's just like whoever got something going on, we both just like, all right, all hands on deck, we're going we're gonna to do that. Each other. Yeah, because I definitely need, I couldn't do, I hate to be like this, I couldn't do nothing without him. Wow. Like it, it's like that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But that's, yep. how, that's how you're supposed to do when you find mm-hmm. that person. Mm-hmm. Um, they're supposed to build you up. For sure, for sure. And bring you down. Um, so that's amazing to hear. Shout out to you, King. Um, <laughs> we hear some stories on here. <laughs> oh, yeah, but my first <laughs> baby <opposite>. daddy. <laughs> right. uh-huh. Oh God. So, yep. Uh, I, 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 I can't help but get into the history of Podcast Bay because um, <laughs> we can never forget where we started. Hell yeah. Because that's where it's going to be where we end up in the biggest of form. For sure. Like you just said, you're creating a show that incorporates your first love with your second love. Yeah. So the first love was podcasting. And mm-hmm. I came in the game and saw you and was, you was <laughs> killing it. You was eating. I mean, I was very inspired by what you were doing. Um, from your perspective, what do you feel like you've gained from podcasting? What do you feel like you uh, basically um, accomplished okay. while being a podcaster? All right. So <laughs> so I was so young, and one thing I can say I gained from it was I learned that whatever you put your mind to, you can really do that shit. Like, first, the podcast, that was the first, I would say, it feels like I built a house, like layering bricks. Mm-hmm. It was like, first it was a podcasting idea, then it was get on Anchor. Oh, that's the place you can learn how to start the podcast. Yep. Then it was buying the mics and equipment. Then boom, 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 the ideas start flowing, and I could talk about anything I wanted. And it almost got to a point when I could talk to anybody I wanted to talk to. Like, some of them interviews, I was coming across some of my favorite motherfucking people and picking them out and interviewing with them. So who were some of your favorites? Um, Episodes it's viewers. so weird. Um, okay. One of my favorite episodes was with this lady from the Bronx. She was a professor. Mm-hmm. She, she turned me up crazy. Did um, she? she has like, she's like an author. She's super sophisticated, like way too sophisticated to be on like my little ass platform. But then I'm like, I had to think, don't think of yourself mm-hmm. as small, Brie Brie. Yeah. Like you look, gr- you're grown. That book had to be started with one, with one day. Man, yeah, she she was, and we were talking about domestic violence awareness, and she had just a crazy story. Um, I still got it up. Um, I remember I worked with Handsome Center, so. Frisk me good. Shout out to Frisk me good. We're we we running up to you. We yes. running up to you. You are doing amazing things in this city and outside. She turned city. Cleveland up. Like, no, for real. Cardi B wore her shit. Everybody. Come on. And oh, so that's another thing. Oh, the cat's out the bag. But she's one of the first people I'll be interviewing through the web series. So <laughs> her and Alex, which is Handsome Center, he was on when we were just talking about like homophobia in the black community. Mm-hmm. I love podcasting. Don't get me wrong, but I was so young, and it was like to hear like my platform was getting played in school. It was like it started getting scary for me. Oh. Yeah, I was like creeped out. Like my cousin, who is super super sophisticated and stuff. I remember going to her graduation party, and she was like, "Some of my friends from TSU heard your podcast," and I'm like, "What?" Like. Huh? Like, I just couldn't imagine. And me and her, like, she's like 20, I would say she's like 10 years older than me. 
so we're not in the same age group, but it's like this podcast is being heard. Um, I'm, I'm going to say I'm glad I didn't go too much further. Like, I think something, it was really my job because I had an um, opportunity to work at a radio station at WOVU. Oh, I yeah. did the classes and everything, but I got nervous. And I'm glad I was shy because what podcasting has turned into within the past couple years is relationship discourse. What you mean? And, well, well, you are doing a, a fucking wonderful job, but you know, podcasts. They, they done got a little annoying over these years. People, oh, I mean, it just seems like everybody talk about relationships and shit like that. And I didn't want to get wrapped in that because if I was to voice some of my opinions, I had some pretty crazy opinions within the past couple of years. I mean, I was a, a college student. <laughs> so I don't know. I didn't want to be known for any... I don't want nobody holding what I would have said against me. Because... If you want a bag, you got to appeal to the masses, baby. But more so than the bag. Oh, you disagree? Yeah. I think I didn't want to also offend nobody with what That's I said. That's a big one. That's, That's more so. One. That's a big one. That's more so. And I agree with that for sure. But I feel like you create your wave, you create your own wave. You don't have to conform to nobody. They mm-hmm. actually conform to you. That's exactly. Why, that That's why relationships are so big now because somebody started that. And then I will a say. trend came in that everybody wanted to be a part of. Yeah. Did you all make your own trend? You were yes. making your own trend. I did with the black history yeah. and the social oh, issues. Uh, that shit was hard. Were, I'm not going to lie. It's so hard for me not to talk about it. It was so powerful <laughs> in that moment for you to be that young and yeah. touch. I mean, you were reaching 50, 60 year olds and they were like yeah. really yeah, in tune with that you. That was crazy. That was crazy. Um, so congrats on that. Thank first you. Because that's, that's big and it thank is you. hard and it does get scary. And it's like, especially when things are moving outside of your control, it's like, whoa. But I'm glad you found another avenue to still share the love you have. Yeah, because that and that's what it is. Conversations can honestly go anywhere. And depending on what you're going through at that time, you might not give your best self. Because Mm -hmm. honestly, this is the second episode me and T for two. That first one (laughs) was bad because it was like a reflection of me. I wasn't as bubbly and upbeat Mm -hmm. and cheerful as Mm -hmm. I could have been. I think I was actually being like a nihilist, like a negative. Yeah, anyways, so with podcasting, sometimes I feel like just showing up every day um, and putting on a mask mm-hmm. if you have to, because you might not be feeling so good, is really a skill. And shout out to you for doing oh, it's this been shit. Days. It's definitely been days. The, the, the interviews y'all see where I don't talk too much probably went through some that night. Man. <laughs> So I'm just going to let them get their thing See, off. See, and I didn't want my platform to be, like, too reflective of the shit I was going through. Like, what I if I just be people. like, I hate niggas because X, oh, Y, Z. And I it's like, no. <laughs> from time to time. It's, but it's, that's the real, that's true. And I feel like today, in today's day and age, transparency is what people look for. Yeah. Through, through all of the trendiness. Yeah. The transparency people kind of stick, I feel like. Yeah. Because they were like, well, I was this when you met me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, That's my true. opinion may be what it is, but it, it was my opinion when you met me. Yeah, so, facts. Um, I think for me as a podcast, it just brought me so much confidence in my voice. It, that's why I started podcasting, though, because to find my voice, because I always felt like I was, I was always in leadership positions, but I didn't know how to speak how I wanted ah. to. I didn't. In, in certain aspects, when I felt like I was being belittled, I didn't know how to speak up for myself. And this platform, uh, podcasting in general, because I didn't just start with the King Keith, nobody did. I didn't just start interviewing. I actually started the podcast prior to this. It really gave me the That voice. was a sports one. Yep. Oh. It's coming back, y'all. Don't worry. Somebody that is that so happen. crazy, dude. Absolutely. We were like... Young podcasting wow. niggas yeah. like me, you, <laughs> and Dev. In the game. That's facts. Oh, I, and Dev, the one who actually put Shout me on the podcasting. Is he in LA now or some shit? That boy doing amazing things. Very on LA, brand. Sure. Very on brand for him. Man, very, very much a leader in the podcasting space. When I would have not gotten as far as I gotten without knowing that guy. For <laughs> sure. Shout yeah. out to Dev. Shout out to Don. Y'all do y'all thing, man. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, man, that that was for sure for me a thing that I needed and I needed that voice and I didn't really I still don't care I absolutely don't care (laughs) (laughs) what people's opinion of me are like I don't because it because I know I'm doing this from a genuinely 
good place. That's what's up. I hate to be that person, but or, what, what's your sign? I'm a Taurus. Oh, you gave Leo. All right, I can see Taurus. Yeah, Taurus give off other signs sometimes. That's yeah. What, that's what we're kind of known Y'all for. Y'all niggas are something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I try to man. be transparent because y'all be acting like Taurus be different people. I'm like, <laughs> no, we just who we are. But okay, so transitioning and you 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 get to this pinnacle and you kind of like I wouldn't say stop. I would say transition into yeah. another passion because you, again you were cooking. You were on. Li- I mean, we went live and you was cooking and mm. you were still podcast based. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. This is this is our journey. So oh damn it. Ah, I hate when people keep record of things. Uh, <laughs> it's my head now. It's my, I, it's my head now. But, um, it's crazy. From there, when do you say, okay, I'm officially Chef Bay now. It's time to kind of put the podcasting thing to the side oh. or to the, to the back of the mind because we got to focus on branding for the. So the you know how you have this fearless, like, I don't care what anybody thinks mm-hmm. attitude. I, too... And I would say I'm like that, but then I'm like, I'm trying to develop into it more. Mm. And so I really, I mean, after seeing a bunch of tweets like, man, they should, I think the CIA dropped a podcasting equipment into the black community or <laughs> all them dumb ass tweets where people just started hating on podcasts. I'm like, man, I don't want to be associated with this shit at all. Mm. Like, I ain't even trying to be on that type of time no more because it's like, it's so saturated with stupid stuff. It is. But then you find some cool podcasts where people are, like, uh, I like the ones that's like the murder mystery. People love them. People love them. I hear about them. <laughs> I never yeah, really I tap in. Them. I always like the money type podcast, yeah. the, the self motivation. Nah, yep. that's what I was the Andrew Tate. <laughs> like, <laughs> people. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just thinking about like different types of like, um, what do you call it? The, the moguls. Yeah. I like uh I like Mark Manson, the art of not the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Uh, that guy, he's dope. Yeah, that's his book, right? Yeah, he got a subtle and art. Did he, of not he, giving made a, a, he made a podcast. Uh, he got. I be listening to his audio books. I be getting audio books gotcha. mixed up that's with podcasts I, I, because it sounds like it should. It's all that's the same. What, I think that's why podcasting will be around for a long time because yeah. it's so similar. Yep, yeah, and that's where I think I found my niche. Like, I'm not done podcasting. I think I needed to just come back and regroup and find, mm-hmm. like, a niche to get into. I just didn't want to have conversations that goes elsewhere because that's what people start turning my platform into. Gotcha. I remember what, now some of the worst episodes I had, man. I ain't going to cap. All right, so the Hebrew Israelite, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a heavy I got ambushed man. with, so I was supposed to, well, I met the dude, and he was like, yo, sister, da 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 I like the thing. Yes, yeah, so I was just like, okay, <laughs> I, I, was, right, I was like, okay, I'll have you interview you. Yeah. Man, when I tell you, he brought like five to seven guys, and they was all in there, and they, the dude start over-talking me on my, pa- on my platform, because you know, women are like second class citizens and in them type of communities absolutely. and stuff. And I'm like, ah, hold on, because yeah. this is my platform. Absolutely. And I won't release this episode. So I never released it. <laughs> um, it is absolutely. somewhere in the archives. And it was another episode where I was talking about spirituality and like holistic healing. And you know how those conversations would be like, ooh. Mm-hmm. So I did that with somebody else, and that shit went on for like two hours. And I'm just like, what are we talking about again? Because sometimes if you sit and uh, you can sit up and talk to anybody oh, for an episode, but you don't know what be going on in people's minds. They right. goddamn try to get their shit off. And it's like, what are we doing at this point? Right. Like, yeah, so I, that's what got me really out of podcasting. Because I'm more of like a straight to the point person. Right. That's why I, need a, I needed a niche. Otherwise, things go crazy. That makes sense. <laughs> so where can they find podcasts? Um, Chef Bay, and where can they find the uh, eventual podcast is it going to be on all podcasting platforms it like should YouTube? remain i'll just probably rename what i have going on um but the business is fab cuisine i'll be i'm on all platforms twitter instagram youtube i'll do youtube shorts tiktoks everything so just preparing for my rollout and i'll be dropping early december i love it so going into 2024 because that's december um, for you, what is like kind of the goal, kind of the, the 
I want you to just kind of manifest something on this, because uh-huh. what happens on our, on my platform, and I love it, and I, I honestly thank God for it, is that people manifest what happens next. I and love this. if you're not afraid to speak it and live it, you can do it. But it, when you are afraid to speak it and live it, it will not come true. So okay. I would love to kind of see if you yeah. can manifest um, something next. I want to manifest interviews with some heavily influential people, whether they're big or small, like, I don't care how many followers you got. I mean, if you happen to have a lot, come on. But I'm really trying to connect with people who's really in tune with their business and um, just, you know, put them on a platform. I love it. Yep. Now, um, your boyfriend is here. Shout his brand out again. Blast Apparel. Blast Apparel. Mm-hmm. And uh, where can they follow that at? Um, it's so it's B-L-X-S-T Apparel on Instagram. We got a Facebook page. And we have a website, Shopify link, but it's on the Instagram page. <laughs> okay, you can, you can go right there. Yep. Find the brand. I love it. Um, I want to. I don't want to miss anything. Is there anything else? I think we got it all. I think that's some, I think we. I think we hit the nail. <laughs> um. So you know the last thing we got to do here is called get it off your chest. Oh. Um, yeah, a lot of shit on the my one, chest. This is the one. This is the. This is the segment you can just let it all. Yeah, get it all off. Yeah, make me take my needed. wig off. <laughs> but, um, no. but, yeah, just uh, whatever you need to get off your chest, whether it's for yourself, whether it's for the people that maybe did critique you, maybe the people who did inspire you, uh, just get this off your chest before we see you again. All right. So I'm about to just put on my fake positivity mask real quick. So one thing I need to get off my chest is I really do want, like, people to genuinely, like, be happy. <laughs> Thank you.